Grandpa Glover takes on Jamal Hill this upcoming Saturday at UFC 283 in Brazil. Glover's fighting in his home country, and I can't wait to see it. So I'm going to give my prediction and my breakdown. Glover Teixeira is the oldest looking UFC fighter I've ever seen. Here's a photo of young Glover Teixeira at 21 years old, looking like a dad at a cardio kickboxing class. Dude, he looks like Dana's dad. You know, he's only 43 years old, but the guy looks like he's 73. But let's be honest, Glover is an absolute monster, okay? He's a freak. When he takes guys down, he's an absolute freak. He's got old man strength paired with the strength of someone that's been grappling since they were little. And that's why he's one of the most dangerous grapplers we've ever seen in the upper weight classes for MMA. He finishes guys on the ground. I made a tier list video about the most dangerous grapplers in the UFC. Glover Teixeira was in my A tier. The guy is as dangerous as they come. He fucks everybody up on the ground. Jamal Hill doesn't strike me as a guy that's really been grappling since he probably made his first MMA debut. <laughs> He probably learned about jujitsu after his first MMA fight. He probably saw his, you know, opponent try to do something on the ground. And he was like, fuck, I thought we were boxing. And why Jamal Hill reached out to Anthony Smith, of all people, to help him beat Glover Teixeira is beyond me. I mean, that's his old punching bag. And his fucking teeth were falling out. My teeth are falling out. Yeah, breathe. And that's some UFC 1 Family Guy cartoon type of shit. That doesn't even happen in fights these days. Glover Teixeira ate that boy. And you're reaching out to Anthony Smith because he's got a black belt? I mean, this is the same guy that says John Jones isn't all that good to cope with the fact that he got dogged the entire fight. You know, Mike, I, I don't think John Jones is all that good. He's not that good. He's, he's pretty fucking good. <laughs> no, I, I don't even think... You're taking advice from Mr. Delusional? <laughs> like, listen, I know that Anthony Smith is pretty decent. I know he's got some good skills, but let's just be fully honest. He is not anywhere near the level of grappler of a Glover Teixeira. He's not. I know he submitted the big bear Devin Clark, like this guy that will never be ranked in his entire life, but he got cut through like butter against Magomed, destroyed by Glover on the ground, and I actually think the Glover is probably one of the greatest fighters at light heavyweight history when it comes to the ground. I think he's phenomenal. And I will give Anthony Smith some credit because I watched his fight with Glover back yesterday, and he was piecing up Glover on the feet for two rounds. He clearly stole the first two rounds. It's just that his corner was going berserk the entire time, calling out what to throw every five seconds, and he gassed out. He didn't have anything for Glover on the ground. Of course, I don't expect Jamal Hill to be able to learn everything that there is about the grappling in the matter of five, six weeks, but to expect him to win this matchup if he is taken down is lunacy. It's crazy. Yuri Prohaska survived on the ground with Glover Teixeira in my opinion, based on his grit and just the will to survive, the will to win. Yuri is as tough as they come, and he was like Harry Houdini on the ground. Shout out to the MMA guru to saying that, to making that comparison, but he houdini his way out of all these bad positions, and I just think that Yuri's just a guy that's built different. The guy's a different kind of cat. For God's sakes, he sat in a room for three days, alone, in darkness. He's a freak, mentally a freak. And I hope he's okay, but let's be honest, Yuri Prohaska is as talented as one can be when it comes to being wired for combat, for martial arts. You know what I mean? But listen, Jamal Hill's a dog. He's really tough, but so is Glover. Glover Teixeira has the bulldog Mike Tyson style. He gets hit a lot and he has a phenomenal chin. Glover's got that bulldog style where he just comes forward, he gets hit a lot, but he sees the shots coming and he braces himself really well. He knows that, okay, I have the style where I'm not the best wrestler that there is. I don't have the best takedowns, but I can outlast guys. I'm tough, right? He's got that Rocky style. He's going to get hit a lot. He might lose the first couple rounds. He might get lit up, but his opponents will start to feel the pressure. They'll start to gas out, and Glover Teixeira always moves forward. And when he does get in on the inside of his opponents, he has really clean boxing, really powerful boxing too. Great uppercuts, phenomenal right hand. And he puts guys down with it too. He cracked a guy like Jan Blahovic. And we've seen him knock down Anthony Smith multiple times in their fight, despite getting the shit beat out of him for the first couple rounds. And here's the thing about Jamal Hill. The guy has, what, a total of six fights in the UFC versus Glover's 22. So Glover has the experience advantage and he's the much better grappler. I'm putting 22 UFC fights, including three and four, 
WEC fights. That's 26 high-level fights versus six. Versus the guy that probably didn't even know what jujitsu was until after his first MMA fight when he learned that you couldn't just box. I mean, I'm just fucking with Jamal Hill. He looks like a old school, retired college basketball player with a bit of a beer belly. He's a beast. He's a dog. And he just doesn't look like he's a phenomenal athlete. He doesn't look like a guy that is going hard in the gym in the off season when he hasn't had a fight in a while. He's not like Yuri Prohaska who's hiking through mountains, climbing Mount Everest. And that's partly why Yuri gave Glover such a tough fight. Because going into that, I actually thought that Glover, if he took Yuri down, he was going to make quick work of him and finish him. Yuri Prohaska has a knack for getting out of bad positions, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. I just think that Glover Teixeira is going to, at some point, get Jamal Hill to the ground. We've seen Tiago Santos take him down. Tiago Santos is nowhere near the caliber of grappler that a Glover Teixeira is, and Glover Teixeira is the better wrestler than Tiago. Glover's not the best wrestler. In fact, he doesn't even shoot that often, but he sure as fuck is a bit different than Tiago Santos. And if Glover does take Jamal Hill down, I don't see Jamal Hill actually putting up a bit of a fight. What has Hill done on the ground? He's trained for five weeks with Anthony Smith. Like, all right, Anthony Smith is going to give him the keys to the fucking castle now. And Jamal Hill lacks the experience on the ground. But how am I going to stack that up against like 20 years of experience in the grappling? I just can't. And so I think that Glover Teixeira is going to take him down. I think he'll get hit a little bit early on. I could definitely see that. Jamal Hill's got the reach advantage. He's got a significantly longer reach. He has some power and some heat in his hands, but but he doesn't really have like that one-shot power. For sure, I've seen him knock out OSP, which in my opinion is his most impressive win. I've seen him knock out, you know, Johnny Walker, but Johnny Walker has no chin. This is Glover that we're talking about. And we keep thinking that Glover Teixeira is going to get his ass kicked. He's 40 years old. You know, Jan Blahovic is going to knock him out, but it doesn't happen. And he takes these guys' best shots and just keeps on coming. So all of a sudden, he's going to lose his chin. At some point, that may happen. I just don't think it's going to be against Jamal Hill. I think Jamal Hill might land some good shots on him. I just think he's going to be worried about the takedown because he knows that Glover is built different on the ground. What's going to happen if he gets taken down early and you have Glover Teixeira, who's a master of controlling guys and keeping them down and manipulating them and, and using his weight to hold you there? All of a sudden, he's beating the shit out of you. He's in full mount. He's throwing big punches, ground and pound. He takes the neck. And it's over. We all go home. Glover Teixeira is the champion and Grandpa's got a belt. And let's just look at their last opponents. Glover's beat Anthony Smith, Kutalaba, Nikita Krylov, Tiago Santos, and of course, he beat Jan Blahovic. And compared to Jamal Hill, that's looking pretty good because Jamal Hill beat Funky No Chin Johnny Walker, the oldest version of old man post John Jones Tiago Santos, and he was getting taken down in that fight. Granted, he looked great early on. He was stuffing takedowns early on, but I, that's against Tiago, bro. That's the, the Muay Thai guy. He's got the hammer on his chest. He's not a grappler. Other than that, he's got a knockout over young Jimmy Crute, which is all right. Jimmy's talented. You know, a lot of people talk about him as someone that could be really successful in the UFC in the future, but Jimmy Crute's got little T-Rex arms. <laughs> and then he has the OSP win, which I'll give him his roses on. I honestly think that the OSP knockout was pretty impressive. OSP is a big heavy hitter and he's got a pretty good chin too. He's a tough guy. And of course, Paul Craig fucked him up in the first round who tore his arm up, broke his arm. Paul Craig completely annihilated him, you know, in less than a few minutes, which is really impressive. But I think Glover is going to do something similar. I don't think Glover is going to pull guard like a Paul Craig. I don't think he's just going to take the arm, but I think he will establish top control at some point in this fight. And Jamal Hill, despite the fact that he's a talented striker, I don't think he has anything for Glover on the ground. And I haven't really seen him stuff takedowns from someone who actually has some decent wrestling. Is he going to Houdini his way out of bad positions like a Yuri Prohaska did? There was something else going on in the soul of Yuri Prohaska that night. Yuri Prohaska had the stars aligned. His prayers were answered because he got put in some really bad positions. And actually, a lot of people would go back and say that Yuri got his ass kicked in that fight. But I actually had it 2-2 going into the fifth when I watched that fight back. Nonetheless, I was incredibly impressed by Glover Teixeira's ability to get hit. And as I said earlier on in this video, one of Glover's strength is the fact that when he does get hit, he braces for it. He sees it coming. He's got a high, tight guard. And sure, he's a little slower than he used to be. But he sees the shots coming, he takes them well, and when he does land, he lands big because he doesn't throw all that often. And when he does connect, he makes it count. I would say, in general, I have this being like a 
78% chance for Glover Teixeira to win, 28 for Jamal Hill. I think the Glover's just a better fighter. I think he's much more skilled, and I think he has more ways to win this fight. So I'm going to go with Glover Teixeira, and I'm going to pick a second or third round submission for my man Glover. Grandpa's got the belt. I can't wait to see it. I'm happy that the UFC put him in Brazil. This will be a big moment for him. I, I like Jamal Hill. I like his fighting style. I'd pick him to beat a lot of guys. I'd pick him to beat Anthony Smith. They were supposed to fight, and I would pick him to beat him. But again, training with Anthony Smith isn't going to help you because Anthony got beat up and got his teeth knocked out by Glover and had nothing for him on the ground. I think you should have been training with Cejudo. You should have been training with, you know, Corey Anderson, <laughs> one of these guys that can stuff Glover's takedowns. But he chose the wrong guys. And we're going to see old man Glover get the belt and I'm looking forward to it because this should be a good fight while it lasts I've never really seen a boring Glover to share a fight so yeah guys like comment and subscribe I hope you enjoyed the video who do you guys think is gonna win let me know in the comments